This is a video basically about the alpine butterfly and the circus bolin, farmer's loop. I think sometimes it may be called a three or a, a three ring bolin or something to that effect, not to be confused with a three loop bolin. And I don't normally like to do knots or how to tie knots. I think there's an awful lot of resources out there about how to how to tie knots. And there's a lot of different ways of tying the knots, so I find the way that works best for me, and and that's my way of doing a knot. So um, I, you know, I'm not teaching knots. This is a demonstration, though. But there was a conversation about the circus bowling and the alpine butterfly uh, last week that got my attention and really got me thinking, and I wanted to present a few things uh, to others so that perhaps it keeps them thinking as well. Again, this is not about which is best. If you like a particular knot and it works for you, use it. I just think the best thing is that the, we are all aware of what's going on and um, you know, more information allows you to make your choice. So um, this is a this is a couple of knots I posted on um, social media and I left them out there for a while with a lot of very highly regarded and what I consider the experts in the tree climbing field to look at the knots and I just put the comment I wasn't trying to bait anybody I was just trying to get a fair evaluation of what I think might be some information people uh, would would like to know. So I posted it and nobody really caught it and I was actually um, kind of surprised. I didn't try to fake the picture to make it look like the one was the back side or the front side. I had them both facing this way so that it wasn't obvious that you know if you're posting a picture sometimes you'll do it like this so that you see the back side and then the front side or vice versa. But I had them both facing just like this as a as a demonstration of the alpine butterfly and actually I mean of, of the circus bowling I said I'm practicing the circus bowling but um, and we're gonna get into those but <clears throat> would the real circus bowling please stand up all right that seems to be pretty good circus bowling right there let's try this one oh all right there I think I just demonstrated one of the things that is my concern with the circus bowling before I talk about the circus bowling, though, I'm going to go over the alpine butterfly. The alpine butterfly has the very similar application. It may be more applicable for climbing. Um, I don't know how great it is for rigging because I don't think it was ever intended to take uh, excessive loads, loads that would generally exceed the safe working load of your of your line. I think that probably happens many times in a rigging situation or if you're pulling your truck out of the mud or something like that you don't really care you just want to get your truck out of the mud. But the definition of a good knot is one that's easily tied and easily untied and serves its purpose. So the alpine butterfly for climbing in a midline knot used for cinched canopy anchors or even a basal anchor uh, floating anchors, uh, all kinds of application, but uh, the alpine butterfly is the one that I find most useful. Now I'm trying to film this so that my hands will be in front of me and there will be a clear view of the rope and the knot as I, as I tie it. So the alpine butterfly is pretty easy to tie. It's uh, easy to identify and very secure and I find that it is easy enough uh, to untie. I've never had it seized up in any kind of a climbing uh, situation. Um, here's a couple things about the Alpine Butterfly. It can be loaded in any direction. It can be anchored this way. It's uh, perfectly symmetrical. Uh, in other words, both halves are exactly the same. And um, you can see that it's easily identified. Uh, whenever you tie an alpine butterfly, it's going to have a cross and it's going to have parallel lines. And this is just how it ends up when it's dressed. Now the cross and the parallel lines, if you're familiar, you will find the same characteristic 
in like a double overhand stopper knot. It'll have a cross and it'll have parallel lines on the opposite side. Same thing with a uh, double fisherman's knot. Very easy to help identify that when you tie it. Um, also, with the configuration the way that it is, it makes it very easy after it's been loaded to break it back open because as you push the, uh, the lines together, it opens those loops and allows the alpine butterfly just to fall back open. Now, if you've put my full weight on it, it's not going to be quite that easy. But again, I've never found it to be difficult. Um, again, when you tie it, this time I'm going to be a little bit more careful about dressing it. But notice, and you just find this interesting, but notice again, it's very easy to recognize that it's tied correctly. But notice this time, I tied it almost exactly the same way, except this time, the two lines on one side are parallel. So what do you think the other side's gonna look like? It's got a cross. I mean, it just is, makes it so easy to identify. It's a secure knot. And another thing, when you, when you tie an alpine butterfly, and this, I think, goes to be said for any midline knot, when you tie, dress, and set it, and I want to add um, another step to all of that is to verify, uh, and I think we all do that anyway, but just verbally, it's, it's a verify, and this is the part of that formula that I think the alpine butterfly shines in, is that it's so easy to identify. But the point is, when you're setting a midline knot, pull it like it's a midline knot. Pull your rope from end to end, not I love using knot when I'm tying knots. Not this way when you're tying a midline knot. That's not how you want to dress and set it. In other words, if you try to set it that way, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look funny. And then when you go to use it, it resets itself. So you don't want that to happen. You want to set it the way you're going to use it. And this is how that knot would generally be used in loaded in this configuration, pulled in this configuration, or set as a, a floating anchor someplace. Oh, and I forgot to mention one more thing about the alpine butterfly that I really like. And this goes to tying that very tight eye. I use a quickie a lot. Uh, right now they're kind of under a recall because there were some made from a die cast uh, configuration and they got pretty sloppy. I think it's just a die cast hole. And so they're replacing these uh, rounded pins with a sharper pin. Um, still, it was, I think they'll replace that. But, but nonetheless, I really do like the Quickie um, because it's a great anchor. Uh, it's secure. Keep it in sight. But notice on the Quickie, it has these tapered sides. So when you put the quickie on your climbing line, you want that to stay oriented. This is, this is the proper orientation for the quickie when it's being held this way. And so um, having, having it that way helps maintain the orientation. If it ever gets a little bit sideways, the tie dye makes it want to straighten back out and orient itself. So that's one of the reasons um, I use a tie-dye. And one of the things I like about the Alpine Butterfly is that to me, when I tie it, it's easier for me to tie a tie-dye with the Alpine Butterfly than it is with the Circus Bolin. Here's another great configuration uh, with the Alpine Butterfly. If you're tying it with a wider eye, I think uh, Drew Bristol, um, Tree Cutter Doug, some guys came up with this configuration. Uh, if you're using a ring, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty cool configuration. But um, let me start that over again. I got talking and, and I want to follow all the way through so that it's clear as to how I'm tying this. But if you do it with a large eye, Again, there it's 
tied, dressed, set. There's the parallel lines, there's the cross. So now, if we have a wide eye like that, we can take a ring. Hardware is nice if you're going to be running another rope through that, of course. So we run that through. We try to make sure that all this is visible. And now we basically just girth hitch the ring to the alpine butterfly. Let me take, let me take some, reorient the slack, put a clove hitch on there, tie it up a little bit higher. All right, I think that gets me oriented back in front of the camera. But now when we set this, we have a piece of hardware on here that if you were going to run another rope through this for a, a doubled rope climbing system, midline someplace as a floating anchor, or if you wanted to run a configuration where you had a split anchor between between two trees or something. I did a removal some time ago that was a really dead lightning struck pine and so I put my anchors on both sides of the pine and uh, use basal anchors on each side. If you have a basal anchor here and a basal anchor over here you can adjust that anchor to any place you want it plus it's really easy to release your anchors and and uh, drop your drop your line when you're done. It makes it really easy to retrieve from the ground. So that's kind of a cool configuration um, with the Alpine butterfly. All right. So if someone was using perhaps the Alpine butterfly for climbing, and then using the circus boland for rigging. Uh, that they were, or other situations where they're likely um, severely loading the, uh, the, the rope or they're uh, leaving the knot on there for a long period of time, pulling it repeated times and seizing it up. I do believe the alpine butterfly does release better. But this, this is the concern, and I'm, and I'm going to um, tie this kind of like the way that somebody would tie the circus bowling. So you tie it, you know, you do your tie dress and set, um, and there you go. You're thinking that you're thinking that you've got your circus bowling. You look at that and go, feels pretty good. Not obviously this is a dramatization, you know, it's but it's it's potential. But anyway, so there you go and you somebody else looks at that and they go, oh yeah, it looks like a circus bowling. But then when you pull on it, it just basically comes loose. Now, obviously, not well, not obviously, that's why I'm doing this video, but uh, a properly tied uh, circus bowling really is an easy knot to tie. You just do the three loops. But this is what got my attention. That's so similar in nature to uh, particularly the way I tie an alpine butterfly. But that is very similar. Some people, and I used to do it this way a lot, but now I do the alpine butterfly like this, and you do a circus bowling like that. So if you're doing a circus bowling, and you put the loops through here like this, and then you take the left and move it to the center, and the right and move it to the center, and the left and move it to the center, now you've made a circus bowling, and that is a properly tied, dressed, and set circus bowling, but look at how much more difficult it is to visually verify that. It's tied, dressed, and set, but the verification step becomes just a little bit more challenging. It's also not a completely symmetrical knot, not that that matters. I don't know that the strength is going to be too much different, but it's, it's not entirely a symmetrical symmetrical knot. I also find, and this might just be, be me personally, but I find when I tie it, it's a little more difficult for me to get this eye to be uh, a tight eye. So that's the circus bowling. Just for fun, let me tie the circus bowling again. So there's the circus bowling. Again, it's pretty darn easy not to tie, dress, and set. 
not quite an eye as the alpine butterfly. But I think it, it also bends open pretty well. And some of those turns are a little further away from the stressed part of the knot. Now if I tie it and I get confused and I tie it incorrectly and I tie dress and set it and I think that I've got that and then I go and pull on it, it's just not as easy to verify. So, um, here's a uh, alternative to that and I'm going to take the liberty to uh, post I will notify um, Richard Delaney, but he posted a picture, and I think this is a great alternative for those that are tying midline knots that want something that doesn't get seized up, but yet it's uh, easy to identify. And uh, but it's uh, basically basically a bowline. <clears throat> uh, here's a couple things uh, about the bowline. And I'll tie a couple other configurations, but I think, I think this is a great configuration for that, for that rigging situation where you're putting some pretty severe loads on a knot and you don't want it to seize up. But uh, there's a, a bowline on a bite, and when you tie a bowline on a bite, you're going to take a bite, right? So there's your bite, and you're going to tie the bowline on the bite, there's the bite, so the bite comes through, wraps back up, comes around onto itself, and pardon me if I don't take all the time that would be necessary to properly dress and set, I'll verify this, but that is, that is a bullen on a bite, as you can see. Again, it's okay, anchor knot and all those kind of things, but that's a bowline on a bite, but it's not a great midline knot because the tail's going the wrong direction. So what I really liked about Richard's post is what he calls, or what is called, a bowline with a bite, not on the bite. And I've been told that, and I can see why, that it's a very good knot uh, when it comes to releasing after being heavy lo loaded. So there's the bowline. There's the f left overhand loop structure that we all are very familiar with, with every bowline. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a bite and not pass it through there, but we're going to do tie the bowline with the bite. So now the bite comes up, comes back around, and forms the other loop. Now when we tie dress and set, we want to try to get we want to try to get those loops at about the same length. Now you can see that we have two loops for a good load bearing capacity and the tail goes the direction that we would expect for a midline knot. And I think what makes it very releasable is that when it gets stressed and when it gets pulled, notice this big open channel right there. That gives you a great place to be able to break open the knot. Now obviously I haven't loaded this. When you load that it's going to pull down, but it's not going to pull this down and close up that gap entirely. There's going to be that gap right there that makes it really easy to pull the rope down and break the knot open and take it apart. So that to me looks like a great midline um, knot that's easy to tie, dress, set, and verify. Now just for fun I'll do a couple other uh, of my favorite knots. This is this is uh, a figure eight on a bite. It's one of my favorite for converting a base anchor to a cinch canopy anchor. I use some hardware for it, and I think I've done other videos on that, but there's basically your makings of a figure eight. Sometimes to do these, I have to kind of just let my muscle memory take over. 
So there you go. You're pulling the figure eight, but don't pull the tail all the way through. Pull this back. And now you've got the bunny ears, the figure eight on a bike. Uh, here's another one, and uh, I kind of came up with this. I, I haven't used it, and I wouldn't use it for life support because there's too many other good choices. But I call it the Super Stevedore knot. It's also, uh, it can be a termination knot, or it can, be, um, it can be a midline knot. But you basically start out with what looks like a noose, but it's the structure of a stevedore knot. But then you're going to just pull a bite through that noose. And when the noose comes down, notice, I've got to come down with it now. Notice that the, the part of the knot that would generally get all bound up and give you problems, the part that would give you problems is uh, numerous wraps away from where the real stress comes on the knot. Now, to make it work, you can just put a marlin spike on here. You could also put an alpine butter on, butterfly on here if you wanted to make it more secure. Uh, you could put any kind of a stopper knot on there. You could uh, spike that with a carabiner. But now what happens is when you pull down on this, it'll take extreme loads and it works like a soft shackle in that as this pulls down, it tightens up on this loop and doesn't let this uh, stopper knot come through the loop. So uh, it'll, it'll hold, you know, I put a couple thousand pounds on this just, just to test it and stuff. But what's really great about it is it's so easy to take it apart and then you're done. I mean, that would never turn into an ax knot because you can always pull on the other end and just pull it loose. All right, so that's kind of what I just wanted to cover. I just uh, I wanted everybody to be aware that I think there's a potential uh, error that can be made between those knots. Um, as I see competitions, um, I realize that uh, a lot of times we get in a hurry and we're not tie dressing and setting and verifying a knot like our life depends on it and and that just is really important but again there's the there's the alpine butterfly cross on one side parallel on the other side breaks open Alpine butterfly. Shows I am.
Alright, let's go see how this video looks.